Hi, I'm Hannah. I work here at Heritage in our wholesale department. Hi, I'm Nick and I work in the mail order department. And we're going to show you how to cook some of our Aku Shi Wagyu ribeyes. Um, we have over here our bone-in ribeye steak, our single bone ribeye roast, and then our the standing rib roast. And I, I think they're pretty much all the same steak, just different sizes. Sure. And the roast is, you know, multiple cuts of these steaks. So um, if you do buy, end up buying a large roast and you wanted to cut them into steaks, you could and make, you know, smaller pieces like this. Um, but the beauty of the, the standing rib roast, um, you can make a beautiful large centerpiece, uh, prime rib. I think it's one of the most impressive looking centerpieces. Mm -hmm. um, it's a classic for a reason, prime rib, going out to a steakhouse, celebrations, birthdays, all these things that you can do uh, to enjoy. Um, or just a, you know, a nice Saturday. Um, because it will take a little bit longer than this. So this is like your weeknight yeah. celebration. But it, this is your weekend yeah, celebration. Yeah, but it will be a lot of hands-off oven mm -hmm. time. So it's, yeah. it's not as, you don't need to babysit as much as an individual steak. Mm -hmm. um, but the preparation is gonna be very, very, very simple. Um, you can go as crazy and elaborate and complicated as you want. The one thing I would recommend, which we haven't done today, um, is salt this and leave it uncovered in your fridge um, for at least overnight, you know, 12 hours a day, whatever, ha how much time and fridge space you're w we're willing to uh, um, give up. Honestly, I'm just gonna salt this very, very liberally, put it into a moderately low, medium oven. I'm around 275, 300. And uh, this is a six and a half pound standing rib roast. So we're gonna calculate around like between 15 and 20 minutes a pound. Um, so this is gonna take us around two and a half, three hours, maybe three and a half hours, depending on where we're going. You're really just gonna let it ride in the oven to like, I would say two hours yeah. and not even check it. Um, because, you know, a, a, a roast this size is just not going to be anywhere close. Um, the other technique that we're going to do here is I like to go very, very slow and low at the beginning, and then we're going to sear and get a crust in the oven at the end. So in the same way that we cooked the steak, you seared it first, and then you kind of lowered your pan temp and moved it and kind of cooked it through, and we're letting it rest. And then we're gonna, you know, we'll flash it in, in the pan again to kind of bring it up to temp. But this one is just gonna go slow and low the entire way. And then we'll turn our oven up to 550 degrees, 500 degrees, whatever the top of your oven is. So let's just season this up and throw it in the oven. And then we'll check back in about two hours. So I'm just gonna take some kosher salt, just a ton of it. Just like as much as will. Yeah. adhere to it, you're good, right? Yeah. Um, and then we'll do every side. See, I just dropped that, and when I flipped it over, like half of that salt just fell down into the pan. So um, whatever's going to stick to it. And you know, that, that overnight salting also helps penetrate deep into the center, get it seasoned throughout. If we're, we're seasoning this now, um, you know, you may, when you slice it, you might want to finish it with a little finishing salt. Yeah. Um, Cause it might not penetrate to the center of the roast. Um, but, you know, just go crazy with the salt. Um, I don't think you can really over season a roast this large. Yeah. Um, you can definitely under season it. Yeah, it's a lot easier yeah. <laughs> to go that way. Yeah. Um, but we're just coating all sides of this in, in salt. Um, and we're in a roasting pan with a rack that pulls it off the bottom so that we have a nice convection of heat going around all sides. It's impressive, it's intimidating, because it's, you know, it's, it's the creme de la creme, the top of the crop, you know, and you don't want to mess it up, but- It's not that hard. But it's not that hard, it's not intimidating at all. It's really, it is almost like a set it and forget it kind of thing um, until you're ready. Um, so let's do that. Uh, we'll pop this in the oven. 
So we, we put the roast in at 275, 300 degrees. We're gonna check back in about two hours. We have had our standing rib roast in the oven for about two and a half hours. Um, I'm gonna temp it right now. We're looking for like between 90 and 110-ish, and um, we'll check that out. And I'm gonna pull it out completely while we temp it. And we're gonna want to kind of check it in a couple of different places. Just keep in mind where the tip of your probe is that you're not hitting like a nice globule of fat that will read a different temperature. Um, so let's see, we'll just go straight down. Yeah, we're at like 110, 115. It's looking nice. Let's check this side, we're at 105. 115, 120. We're looking right around where we want to be. And we're gonna blast this in a super hot oven and just like deeply caramelize and crust the outside here for I'd say somewhere between like seven and 10 minutes. Um, we're at 500 degrees with a convection fan. Um, if you're at home, just whatever the hottest your oven can get. Um, we don't want this sitting in the oven for that much longer because we are so close to being like perfectly cooked. Here. Um, so I'm going to pop that in there and we'll see you in like 10 minutes. So our standing rib roast has been in the oven at 500 degrees for about 10 minutes now. And we'll pull that out and check on the color. Yes, thank you. And uh, we have this beautiful deep golden crust all out, all throughout, real crispy uh, fat cap and, and salt crust from when we seasoned that very liberally. Um, you know, let's let's let this rest. And I brought out Matt Botkin, and he's going to make us a couple of martinis to go with this. And by the time he's done cooking, cooking up some cocktails, we'll slice into this. All right, now, because we pulled this out at like 90 to 100 degrees and let it rest for about a half hour before we blasted it at our high temperature oven, um, just that couple of minutes, you know, of him making some cocktails was enough time to let this rest and redistribute all these juices. Um, so I'm gonna pull this guy off and if you want to get like the classic thin prime rib slices, what you're going to do first is is, is uh, cut off the bone. Um, but if you want, you can have some large jumbo slices if you want. And you can just follow the, the gap between each of the bones on the ribs here. So we can slice all the way through and get that. But there's a lot of hungry eyes in this warehouse that I'm going to be feeding. So I'm going to take the off the bone. I'm just gonna get real close here. So whoever the lucky one gets to gnaw on that. And uh, I might take off the decal here too. We'll slice that separately. And the decal is this top, pat, top cap of the, of the ribeye. And then now we have the eye of the ribeye by itself and we can get nice thin slices, prime rib style. If you have like a meat fork, that's also useful. We're gonna carve up some prime rib. Delicious, oh, it's bleeding. It's a... <laughs> that's not true. It's perfectly cooked. Well. So the center is like a medium rare all the way on, and on the edge of the, of the prime rib, you're gonna get a more well done on the edges. And as you carve into the center, you're gonna get more medium rare and rares. With the roast this large, it's a little hard to get everything perfect edge to edge from edge to edge of the roast as well. 
So I'm gonna make a, maybe a little bit of a larger slice here. Cheers, and let's try some of the prime rib. Ooh, please. Get one with crust. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Mm. 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 I took too big of a piece. <laughs> but it's delicious. It's a wonderful centerpiece. Less intimidating. I didn't really touch it. I put it in the oven. I took it out, I let it rest, I put it back in the oven, and I sliced it. I didn't play around with it, I didn't fiddle with it. It's, uh, it's more forgiving than most people would like to think. Just like a martini. Yeah. Cheers, guys. You can uh, find us online at heritagefoods.com.